Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of that Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. It's going to be a long, hot summer, and with wet weather, an ideal environment for mosquitoes. Bites from mosquitoes can transmit a number of serious diseases, one of which is West Nile virus. You may have been reading more about dengue fever these days, but West Nile is still the leading cause of mosquito-borne illness in the continental United States. So what is West Nile? It's a member of the flavivirus family, and cases have been reported this year in states as far apart as Arizona, Michigan, Mississippi, and Maryland. Local mosquitoes can infect a wide variety of hosts, including at least 30 species of mammals and birds, including horses, dogs, and cats. By the way, everyone thinks that West Nile is named after the Nile River in Egypt, but it's actually named after the West Nile district of Uganda. That's hundreds of miles south where the virus was discovered in the year 1937. Now, what are the symptoms of West Nile? Luckily, 80% of people who become infected with, with West Nile virus don't experience any symptoms at all. But if you're in the unlucky 20%, symptoms usually appear 2 to 14 days after being bitten by an infected mosquito, or rarely after receiving a blood transfusion or organ transplant from an infected person. You can expect to see fever, body aches, and headache. Now, some people will also experience skin rashes, usually on the torso, eye discomfort, and swollen lymph nodes as well. Mild cases recover in a few days to a few weeks and receive lifelong immunity thereafter. Now, about 1 in 150 very, very unlucky patients will develop a sometimes life-threatening sickness, mostly affecting the nervous system. Folks over 60 years of age are at highest risk as well as those with a history of chronic illness or impaired immune systems. Severe symptoms will include headache, high fever, tremors, neck stiffness, muscle weakness, confusion and disorientation, and even paralysis and coma. Pretty darn serious. West Nile can cause something called encephalitis. There are various types, including Japanese encephalitis, St. Louis encephalitis, Murray Valley encephalitis, all sorts of encephalitis. All of them take a while to improve and can cause significant brain damage, sometimes permanent. A 10% death rate is seen in the worst cases. Unfortunately, there is no specific treatment for West Nile other than treating the symptoms as they occur, like acetaminophen for fevers. The worst cases require hospitalization and often intensive care. The good news is that most will recover, although some continue to have long-term problems with weakness and fatigue. Animal to human transmission can occur. If you're caring for a sick horse, for example, use gloves and disinfect all equipment that you used. Let's talk about prevention. The best way to prevent West Nile virus transmission, and for that matter, any mosquito-borne illness, is to reduce the local mosquito population, right? If you live in an at-risk area, you can protect yourself by using DEET or other mosquito repellent, even indoors in areas without air conditioning. Uh, you can also use Picaridin, IR3535, and even oil of lemon eucalyptus, all of these are EPA approved. Wearing long sleeve shirts and long pants tucked into socks, that's a good idea. There are a lot of places that sell mesh outfits for less than 20 bucks. If you're outdoors and have these mesh outfits, you don't have to necessarily be too hot. They're easily found and inexpensive. Uh, clothing can be treated with permethrin, 0.5 percent permethrin is an effective repellent. It can't, however, be used on skin. You want to also keep windows and doors shut if you have air conditioning and use window and door screens if you don't. And mosquito netting on beds and cribs if you have no other option. Eliminate standing water whenever possible. Now you want to get rid of tin cans, flower pots, old tires, bird baths, anything that can hold standing water. Even your pet's water dish can support mosquito larvae. Another good idea is to clear clogged gutters. I would also say that you might try to avoid outdoor activities at dusk, dawn, or early evening when a lot of mosquito species are especially active. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.